Hello and welcome. We are going to solve this problem together. But first, give it a shot on your own. I think you might be surprised what you can do. Okay, so let's read it together. Rectangle R undergoes a dilation with a scale factor of 0.5 and then a reflection over the y-axis. The resulting image in is rectangle S. And which statement about rectangles R and S is true? So I'm going to make a picture of this. I'm going to do a really rough sketch. Right? I'm going to draw a coordinate plane with my y-axis, the up and down axis, and my x-axis, right, that left and right axis. I'm going to just put the arrows on the end here for good measure. We have x and y. And I like to make these doodles because it helps me think about the problem. The rectangle is somewhere. We don't really know where it is, right? But there's a rectangle. And what we know about the rectangle is that it's dilated by a scale factor of 0.5. That just means that essentially we took all the points here in the shape. I'm going to focus on the four points at the corners. And we multiplied their x and y values by one half. So if we call this rectangle R, rectangle S is then going to be essentially half as, half as large on each side. I'm going to move this up a little bit so we have room to draw. So R, if you can imagine now, about half the size of this. I'm going to just estimate here. And I think that should do it. So S is going to be uh, end up being closer to the origin, which is a really interesting thing to start thinking about. Um, but essentially, every single point R, we call them points x, y, is now one half x and one half y. Right? You start to understand. Okay, it's got to be closer to the origin because x's and y's that's our distance from the origin, how far over and how far up. Right? So to get to this point all the way up here, we have to go over some x and up some y. Now we go over half the x, and clearly I'm not drawing this perfectly, it should be more this way, halfway, and maybe I'll shift it over. And uh, the y distance is also going to be half, right? So smooth, I think that's a little bit better. Um, maybe here. All right, the x distance to this point here is about half the distance to that x point. And the y distance to this point is about half the distance to the y point up here. So everything is a little bit closer, but also we have to notice two other things. All of the corresponding angles are equal, right? The angles themselves don't change when you're dilating a shape. Um, lastly, the what's really nice about, one of the nice things about a dilation is that each side, let's say this side has a length of m. Now this side up here, the corresponding side, because the scale factor was one half, that's supposed to be an arrow, that looks terrible, sorry. This side's equal, right? This is also M, because it's a rectangle, opposite sides are equal. These two sides down here are going to be exactly half of whatever the previous length was. Isn't that really cool? The dilation, if the scale factor is one half, every side length becomes a half. Also, the area changes uh, by the square of the scale factor. That simply means, in this case, if each side is half the length of the original, the area is essentially four times smaller. It's a half squared times um, the size of the original. And that's easy to think about if we just do a simple sketch over here. Let's do a separate problem for a moment so we can explain that. Let's say we have a rectangle, and it is originally, I don't know, 3 by 4. And we'll call this rectangle um, A. And then what if our scale factor, K is usually for scale factors, is 2, right? If our scale factor is 2, our new rectangle will be 6 by 8, right? So 6 on this side, 8 on this side. And let's call this A prime. We usually use prime for, um, to denote the image of some original, so you can tell these two are related through a scale factor. Um, so we multiply both sides by 2, so our area is going to be 2 squared times larger. And you can see it here, right, the area is originally, the area of A is 12. What's the area of A prime? Well, that's 6 times 8, that's 48, that's 4 times larger than 12. And if that's not convincing enough yet, we can see what's happening. If we take copies of A and just kind of put it into A prime, oops, we can see that A would fit into A prime about four times if my sketch was perfectly accurate, right? I'm just showing you a rough example of this. So each side of the length is doubled, oops, each side is doubled, so the overall area is going by the four times, or the scale factor squared. So in our case, the scale factor is one half. So it's a half squared, which is a half times a half, a fourth of the original. About four S's would fit into R. Now what about the reflection? What happens if the reflection? Well, reflection is essentially a mirror image. So if we take our rectangle R 
and we reflect it across the y-axis. It's going to be the exact same distance from the y-axis, but on the other side, like over here, let's say. So if we, this would be our prime directly reflected. If it's dilated then reflected, we seem to get a smaller copy of rectangle R, right? It's exactly like S, trying to do exact copy of S, sorry. Uh, but on this side of the y-axis. So X is actually over here, right? This is S. So we'll call this um, R prime. That's our dilation. And then reflection across the y-axis. And notice the corresponding angles across the dilation and reflection are remaining the same. For example, these three angles match. And when we reflect the shape, we don't mess with the size of it at all. It's still the exact same size that it was after it was dilated. So here, we look at our choices. Uh, the answer can't be A, right? They says they are congruent and similar. Congruent means the two shapes are identical in every way except their location. And that's not true here, right? S is smaller than R. They are similar but not congruent. That's correct, right? All the corresponding angles are equal. All of the sides have been changed by a scale factor, in this case, one half. So each of the sides in S is half of the corresponding sides in R. Um, C, for example, we just cross that one out. That's not even possible. They are congruent but not similar. If they are congruent, they are similar. Because again, congruent means that they're identical. And similar just means that each side grows by a scale factor and the angles are equal, which is definitely going to happen if they're congruent. They are neither congruent nor similar. That's not the case here. Right? That's some kind of wonky bent shape, like maybe we mutilated the rectangle somehow, and this was S, right? Totally different shape. That's not happening here. One thing to think about is, going back, uh, when can a shape, when, in what case would the scale factor uh, leave you with a shape that is still congruent and similar? And there are two cases with the scale factor. Think about it for a moment. What two scale factors would get you the exact same shape as R, but in a different location? What scale factor would do that? The first one you might think of, that would happen if k, the scale factor, is 1. The second case is when k is negative 1. If you multiply it by negative 1, you can try it out, plot some rectangle, give it four points, multiply, and cut those four points with the ruler. Then take those four points on the end, for simplicity's sake, and multiply their x's and y's by negative 1. See what happens. You've got a rectangle somewhere in this quadrant right here, in the third quadrant. And you'll see how it kind of flips around. It's really cool. All right, anyway, I hope this helped. Thank you.